guys, welcome to the dyeing studio of Fiber for the People Yarn. I am in here today with the sole purpose of showing you guys how I dye my um, some of my variegated colorways, especially my Lucky Strike variegated colorways. I have a pretty cool method that I've picked up along the way in my research. This is not just my technique. You definitely find things along your process of learning how to do this. This was something I've learned over the course of my research um, and kind of gleaned through that. So I wanted to share it with you because I think it makes a really beautiful variegated skein of yarn. It does break a couple of rules, but the results are beautiful, the yarn is beautiful, and it's a ton of fun, and it's super easy, and that's what really matters. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first things first, some things that you're gonna need. I have my materials laid out here uh, for me right now. You're gonna need a spoon, some tongs, and really it doesn't have to be a spoon. It's just something that can um, kind of move the yarn around in the pot so you don't burn your hands. Gloves are really important. You can use rubber gloves like this, or if you'd like, I do sometimes, uh, it protects a little bit from the heat, uh, house cleaning gloves, similar to this. Um, I'm using them, those right now for my soak water, so I'm just gonna be using these rubber gloves for right now. So have some gloves. Um, definitely you're gonna want an apron, something that you don't mind getting dirty clearly. Um, and then when it comes to mixing your dye stock, which I've already mixed here, you're going to want a face mask to mix your dye stock. I use this face mask here typically. I'm wearing um, a different one around my neck right now. I have two, but this is one that I typically use. It's a great one. Um, but I've already mixed my dye stock, so I'm actually not going to be wearing my face mask, which is great because then you can hear me talk. So we need um, something to stir. We need tongs. That's a really great way to flip the yarn, move the yarn around. I have a dye stock solution here. Um, this is kind of a lucky strike solution that I've added a little bit more dye to to give it a little bit more of a punchy color for the sake of this a tutorial, I guess you could say. I'm using about, that's well, a little bit over 16 fluid ounces of dye stock here. Um, it's really completely up to you and you'll see what, why that's kind of dependent on your preference in just a moment. So I have my dye stock, my spoon, my tongs, and then of course yarn. I have two skeins here of Merino Cashmere Nylon Yarn. This is my Costanza base in the Fiber for the People shop. Two skeins, dry. Don't prepare this in any way other than just maybe putting it on some shower curtain rings so it's easy to get out of the water. It is to be dry. This is the first rule that we're breaking here. So two skeins, dry yarn, plenty of citric acid. Now if this ends up being Stellina yarn, that means that there's about 5% of Stellina, gold or silver Stellina running through the yarn, this should not be citric acid, it should be vinegar. So keep that in mind. Citric acid eats through Stellina, so if you're using a Stellina yarn, definitely make sure that this is vinegar. But in my case, this doesn't have any Stellina in it, so citric acid is the way to go. You're also going to need a dye pot. This is my um, medium-sized dye pot. It works really great with um, two skeins of MCN. MCN is a real lofty, plump yarn. It soaks up lots of water and takes up lots of space in the pot. So um, I'm only using two skeins in this big medium sized pot. My, my large pot is actually quite large. That's why this is considered the medium. And then of course, some kind of a heat source. I'm just using a single burner for this case. And then inside the pot, you're gonna wanna put dye stock number one. So this is a layering technique, meaning that you're going to have two different colors. Now it doesn't have to be that way. You can have the dye stock that starts in the pot be one color, and then the additional dye stock that you add be another, uh, the same color. It'll just kind of add it in a more concentrated uh, variety. It's really completely up to you. But in my case here, I'm using um, dye stock one, dye stock, two over there. So in your pot, you're gonna wanna start with dye stock. So you can kind of have an idea of what that looks like. I'll dip my measuring cup in there. And you can see it's just a very beautiful, deep, reddish, like black almost. It's a, it's a mix of black and some other various different colors. This is a Lucky Strike dye stock that I use. Okay, so prep is really that simple. Now all that we have to do is get our pot turned on. I like to have the water be pretty hot. Um, when I add my yarn. Now, if you're using a non superwash yarn, you definitely don't wanna shock the yarn like that. You don't wanna add dry, you know, room temperature yarn to really, really hot water just because that could possibly felt the yarn. And um, whenever I do this technique with non superwash yarn, I just don't heat the water like that. I start, I put the yarn in the room temperature water and I bring the heat up gradually and it's fine. Um, but in this case, this is a superwash yarn, so it can kind of withstand that kind of heat uh, temperature change. And so I'm gonna go ahead and start heating up my water. I don't want it boiling or anything, but I want it so it's kind of a, uh, there's steam 
of vapors coming off the surface of the water, which I have to be careful right now because it's about 95 degrees in my garage at the moment because it's pretty warm. And so if I'm seeing steam vapor coming off of the water, um, then you can be sure that it's really, really hot, almost boiling just because it's already so hot out here. Um, but just kind of gauge it. You don't want it boiling. You don't even really want it simmering. You just want to see that steam vapor coming off the surface of the water and then you know it's ready to go. Okay, so I changed my mind about that initial dye stock that I showed you. It was like a real pretty um, kind of blue color. Um, that color going with the dye stock that I have in my pot, I decided I wanted it a little bit different, um, something a little bit different. So I added just a smidge of a kind of a gold yellow color to that because I thought maybe a green, a really pretty green would go better with what I showed you. And so I'll show you what it looks like now. So I think that'll look good. So I just kind of added a little teeny tiny bit of um, dye to that and not even, you know, not even very much at all um, to give it a little bit of a different tone um, or hue, I guess you could say. So that's gonna be my dye stock that I add to my pot. Okay, so if you look here, you can see that it is definitely steamy. This is the perfect temperature for adding your yarn. It's not simmering, it's not boiling, um, but we have steam coming off the top. And actually, um, in fact, there are some bubbles coming along the edges, or excuse me, the sides of the pan or pot here. Um, that means it's getting close to simmer. So I can actually turn um, my burner down a little bit because we want um, we don't want to put it in when it's boiling. So before we can add the yarn, we want to make sure that we add our citric acid. So I use six teaspoons of citric acid for this. So definitely want to up the ante on citric acid, make it nice and acidic so that the yarn really absorbs that dye um, readily. Almost as soon as the yarn touches the dye, you want it to really suck it in because what we're looking for is really beautiful streaks of color. We, we don't want an all over color right now. We want really beautiful streaky color because we're going to be adding another color in a bit. Um, so we want there to be a noticeable difference in color. So definitely up the ante on your citric acid, add it to your dye stock so it's ready to go, whether it's citric acid or vinegar, and then we can go ahead and add the yarn. Okay, so I just added all of my citric acid. Like I said, I do six teaspoons in the pot. I like to add it when the water is already hot. That way it ensures that that citric acid dissolves really nicely um, throughout the water. And now I'm ready to add my yarn. Now my water, like I said, is hot, it's ready to go. I have my dry skeins of yarn right over here and we're gonna add these straight to the pot just like this. Now pay very close attention um, because there's something really important that we need to remember when we do this. But first, I'm just gonna go ahead and add my skeins. I try to add them in such a way so that there's, um, a similar amount of yarn from each skein in the water. You don't want one skein of yarn on top of the other and then adding that because then obviously the one on the bottom is gonna receive more of the dye than the one on the top. So you kinda wanna make sure that they're going in, um, you know, in a way that's even. So I'm just gonna hold them and I like to just loop them into the water like this. Guys, there's no right or wrong way to do this other than kinda just what I mentioned before. Just like that. Now I have this overflowing pot. That's what it should look like at this point. Now this is where it's really important um, to kind of break the rules a little bit again. So dry yarn in the pot. Rule number one, broken. Next thing, don't touch the yarn. Don't push it down into the pot nothing just leave it let it do what it's supposed to do and what it's supposed to do is absorb that dye stock as it sinks down into the water that process of sinking down into the water is kind of giving a gradual um, distribution of dye to the yarn so we definitely don't want to touch it at this point what you can do though is put a lid on the pot this is a bigger lid than the pot, but that's okay. You just wanna do something to keep the heat in, put a lid on the pot and let the yarn sink down into the pot and absorb that dye as it goes. Now remember, there's lots of acid in this water, so it's really gonna pick up that dye pretty quickly. Um, you can keep the heat up here. You don't have to turn it off. Um, definitely keep it kind of at a, a steady heat. You don't want the water to boil. If you see that happening, reduce the heat, but keep it at a steady heat and just watch the magic happen. All right, so as you can see here, the yarn is picking up that dye. Um, I'm resisting the urge to push the yarn down. Uh, you can see though that it is sinking into the water. Now, the only time I will tell you to go ahead and push that yarn down into the water is if you notice that all of the dye has been exhausted from the water. If it gets to this point and you notice that there is no more dye in the water and you can kind of see that by looking down that way, um, then go ahead and stick the yarn into the water, push it all down. But as you can see from there, there's just a little bit more dye left to be exhausted. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid back on, let it finish doing its job. Some more yarn will sink down into the pot, but that's okay if you have some leftover parts here that are white. That's what we want because we have other dye stock over here that we're gonna be adding in just a moment. So 
go ahead and let it do its thing, stick on that lid, watch the temperature, and be patient. Okay, so now I'm gonna check and see how we're doing. Sorry about the sawing that you're hearing happening right now. Um, they're doing some work across the street from me. But now you can see that most of the yarn is submerged under the water. There are a few places where there's some dry patches of yarn and that's fine. What I wanna do now is I wanna check and see if my water has fully um, cleared. Okay, now what you can see there is um, virtually clear water. There's a tinge of color which could be casting off of the yarn that's been dyed and just a little bit of color left in the in the water, but that's fine. We can go ahead and push the rest of the yarn down into the water. That's not enough dye in our water to really be an issue. So we're just gonna go ahead and push that yarn down into the water. Now I have a nice clean surface of white yarn right here. Now if I were to pull up a portion of this yarn you would see that below the yarn that first hit has a lot of beautiful color happening in there it's gorgeous so that's definitely going to be darker but we want to keep this lighter side exposed right now because we're going to add our dye stock so let's go ahead and add our second color which is this color right here for me i'm going to bring this over to my pot now i'm going to add this in here just kind of uh throughout the pot i'm just going to, to add it all over the yarn and then i'm going to use my spoon and spread it around um, in the water and that's going to kind of give it another you know it's going to layer another layer of color on here now you're going to have more than just the two colors obviously you're going to have that deeper darker color that's underneath this lighter tone that's coming out right here there's always going to be a little bit of white in the case of of this type of yarn maybe not maybe maybe there's going to be a full coverage with color but you may have some bare yarn left in there and then you're going to have the various different tones of the new dye stock um, that's going in so you're going to have a really beautiful variety of color happening here so that's what makes this a really cool way of, of creating a variegated yarn so let's go ahead and add the new dye stock okay so i'm just going to go ahead and add my dye stock all around just like this it's a really pretty green stirring the water as i go just like that all right that's gonna absorb almost instantly because the water's really hot, there's lots of acid in there, and there's also not a lot of free space for that dye to roam through the pot. So it's gonna really suck into that yarn pretty quickly. So as soon as I do that, I can almost flip the yarn and see the kind of variegated colorway that I've created here. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just let it set for just a few seconds and then we'll come back to it. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we have going on here. Okay, so as I pull it out of the pot, you can see that there are multiple colors. I'm going to go ahead and kind of add it back into the pot so you can see in just a second um, the variety of colors that we have going on here. All right, so let's take a look. All right, guys, so this is what we created. We have this beautiful variegated colorway happening here with this pretty green, it's like a spring green coming through, and then this really pretty, almost like a purpley gray with some maroon going on in there. Really very gorgeous, I love this. If I pull it out, it's really warm. Um, if I pull it out, I can kind of see the distribution of the color. Let's turn this way so you can see it with the light. Oh, look at that, so Cool. so much fun. I what we're gonna do next, I'm kind of looking at this and I'm thinking I love it the way it is. I really do, but I think I'd like to punch it up just a little bit with some speckles. So I'm gonna add some speckles to everything that we have right here. And you don't really have to do a whole lot of prep to do that. I'm just gonna add it straight to the pot, just the way it is. All right, so I'm gonna add speckles to this colorway here, just because I think it'll really be a lot of fun to punch that up a lot. And you kind of have to just think, okay, what's gonna go well with what? I have a green, I have kind of like a deep uh, gray maroon color happening in there. What kinds of punches would go really well with that? What kinds, what kinds of contrasting speckle colors would we like to put with that? Um, and so I'm thinking that I'm gonna add a real deep, almost navy speckle with maybe a fluorescent color. I'm not exactly sure. I'm gonna go over to my dyes. I'm gonna pull out three colors that I think would look really pretty speckled on top of that. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I came up with a really beautiful fluorescent purple color to speckle on there, a deep navy, and then black. I'm such a sucker for black speckles. I think if I can find a way to add them to a colorway, I like to at least consider doing it. I just love that deep, you know, uh, blatant contrast that it provides. So I'm gonna add speckles of these three colors um, and see what we come up with to kind of you know pump up the volume of this lucky strike color a little bit so let's go ahead and see what we come up with okay it's time to put on your mask since we're gonna be doing 
doing some speckling. And it's also time to put on some gloves. I took my gloves off, so I'm gonna add uh, some, put on some more gloves. Okay, so our water is really hot. That steam is coming off the surface of the water. We are actually at this point just below a simmer, and that's good. Because we're speckling, we want the water to be really hot so that the speckles set fast. Now, typically when you speckle, you know, the sharper you want your speckles, the less water you should have in the pan. Um, because any dye that you add to um, water is going to spread out as soon as it hits the water. Unless, of course, you have so little water that it immediately just adheres to the yarn. So it really depends. Now we have um, enough water here that we're going to have a little bit of color seepage, but I kind of like that uh, with this kind of a colorway. I'm, I'm looking for that. So I'm not going to take out any water. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Now when I speckle, I use tea strainers like this one. You can also use a regular spoon. You can use whatever works for you. I just like to use a tea strainer and then I just have a, um, a little uh, teaspoon right here. Um, to scoop my dye into my tea strainer. And now everything that I typically do with my colorways in the shop is, is measured out very meticulously. But in the case of this, this is just, we're having fun with this. So I'm not gonna really measure much of anything. So this is actually going to be a true one of a kind colorway. Okay, so let's go ahead and start adding those speckles. Make sure that your mask is on uh, before you get started. Okay, after each addition of speckles, add your lid so that way it helps to steam set those speckles on there um, and it makes for less uh, less time in the whole process. So that helps to steam set those speckles. So before doing your second layer, add your lid. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the lid off. We can add our next layer of speckles. This was the fluorescent purple. I'm now going to add my deep navy right over the top of these um, fluorescent purple speckles because I wanna create a really beautiful layered speckle look here, almost as if you're recreating the appearance of the dye breaking. Um, when dye breaks, what that means is, is that when it hits the yarn, for, uh, you know, in its, in its form, like if, for example, if I'm adding one, color to the yarn in a speckle right when it hits the yarn all of the different colors that make up that one dye powder will break apart and you'll see all of the elements that go into that dye powder I'm kind of recreating that with this layer technique that I'm doing right now so this is my first layer I'm gonna add my second layer right on top of this Okay, so I like what I have so far, but that deep navy that I was mentioning that I was gonna add to that is so dark that it almost renders the black that I was gonna add kind of um, unnecessary. And so I'm not gonna add black. I'm actually gonna add another punchy uh, speckle. I'm gonna add a really beautiful fluorescent yellow to this. Um, and that might be kind of taking a risk, but that's what this is all about. That's what makes this a lot of fun. So this is um, kind of what I have so far. So you can see the purple is going on in there and then there's this real deep navy that almost looks uh, black all on its own. Once it once it dries, it'll lighten a little bit and you'll notice that it is a true navy. But I don't wanna add another really dark color like that. I wanna add something else to kind of um, brighten it up a little bit. So I'm gonna add a beautiful fluorescent yellow and see how it comes out. All right, now what's really beautiful about this is that I've added three colors of speckles, but what you see starting to happen here are several colors because of the blending and the mixing of the different colors. And that's gorgeous. I love that so much about this method of speckling. Plus you're gonna have the base colors that we created in part one of this uh, Tips from the Dying Studio segment that's also going to add to the various different colors in this colorway. So it's just so much fun to kind of layer over and watch all of the different colors evolve. So there you go guys, that's how you can create a speckled colorway or a layered speckled colorway right over the top of a variegated base coat.
skeins of yarn will be available in the shop the day that this uh, segment uploads. So if you're watching this as soon as it is uploaded, then head over to the shop, see if they're still available and you can snag one or both of the skeins that we just created here. The shop is fiberforthepeopleyarn.com. You can also find Fiber for the People on Instagram at fiber.for.the.people. Thank you guys so much for checking out this episode of Tips from the Dying Studio. If you like what you see here and you wanna keep them coming in your feed, definitely don't forget to subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up to help spread the word. Thank you so much for checking it out and I will see you next time on Tips from the Dying Studio. Bye.